Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you one of my favorite pieces of artboard analog gear, the Analog Design Black Box HG2. What I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to run a bunch of materials through the black box, so mixes, bass, drums, vocals. I'm going to use it subtly, but I'm also going to saturate the hell out of these tubes and I'm also going to compare it to the plugin version of it, the Plugin Alliance Black Box AG2. Intro. Okay, so I'm gonna wear my headphones so I can hear what I'm doing and I'm going to give you a quick tour of the black box very, very quickly. I don't want to bloat you with specs and technical specifications. You can find all these things in the manuals. So in a nutshell, what is the black box? The black box is a harmonic generator, saturator, and to my ears, it's a tone box, a vibe box, a mojo box. It's great for mixing, it's great for mastering, it's great for adding warmth, saturation, it can have this kind of natural tube compression to your material, it can also shape your transients and it can also increase the perceived loudness of your material. Very, very quickly, let me explain the signal path and the controls. We have an input transformer which of course gives you a sound straight away when you drive material through it. Then we go into the pento tube stage and this drives into the triode tube stage, okay? Then we go into a passive output attenuator and after this we have an output custom transformer which again adds some characteristics to our sound. Now on top of that we have this very interesting thing here. We have the parallel saturation path and this basically adds parallel saturation to your signal and we can select if we're going to be affecting the entire frequency spectrum or just the low and low mids or the high and high mid frequency which gives us a lot of tonal shaping capabilities. And we have an old tube switch that allows us to engage a different tube that's voiced a little bit more aggressively. It's, I like this old tube a lot. Then on the right side we have the air circuit. This gives you like a nice top end lift, very very silky, very smooth. I love this thing. And then we have a trim, left right trim. That's because when you drive this uh, tubes really hard sometimes you tend to get a little bit of drift with the left and right channels a little bit of the stereo image gets drifted it's very minimal but i use this switch only when i'm processing let's say a sub bass that needs to be absolutely in the center and it might get a little bit tilted to the left or right we have a meter here and a true bypass button. That's all I'm going to say about the specs. Now let's run some material through it, okay? So in order to show you this as vividly as possible, I put together a track very quickly. I programmed some drums, I played some bass, some guitars. This has minimal processing on the channel so that we can hear what this thing can do on our tracks. So I'm going to use Cubase and I'm going to use the black box as an external effect. Cubase is great handling outboard gear. And first I'm going to add it to the master bus. Quite a few of you will argue that I have to level match and this is a very valid point. But I have to say I don't always level match, okay? Because I want to get this quality gain that this thing gives me. And sometimes when it comes to mastering, I even do this little naughty trick where I raise the output a little bit, saturate a little bit with a pendot and a triode and then overload my DA converter, my links. Hello. Okay, so let's try and play this and I'm going to try and level match.
So straight away, this unit gives me quite a bit of perceived loudness as far as I'm concerned. The track sounds more open, it doesn't sound squashed. We get a little bit of compression, but it's this kind of compression that it gives you this kind of the track breathes, the track gets more groove instead of getting like, okay, it's like squished and you, you can't hear any dynamics anymore. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the saturation circuit, okay, which is parallel saturation, which, in my opinion, brilliant idea in parallel. This is really versatile. Let's try it. Can you hear the difference? I think this difference for master bus processing, for mastering, it's a massive difference, okay? This machine can give you qualities that are really, really hard to replicate with other processors, okay? Let's keep playing. And I'm, I'm paying attention so that I keep the peaks identical when I have it bypassed and when I have it running so that it's fair. But you can tell that it sounds louder and everything sounds better with it, okay? Uh, let's keep going. I'm going to drive the saturation a little bit. For something like mastering, I wouldn't go higher than this for saturation. This is a, maybe a little bit too hot, but I want to show you how this machine can sound, okay? It's probably one of the very few pieces of gear that I know that add this kind of gentle tube compression, but actually the transients sound much better with it. The tracks sound more punchy with it, which is not the usual thing when you start adding saturation and distortion to your signal, right? It tends, everything tends to get rounded off. It rounds them off, but in a very beautiful, tasteful way, okay? What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you these options right here. So instead of using the flat option for the saturation circuit, I'm going to go low. So this way I can add a little bit of nice low end saturation to my track. This is great if you're working on a master and your song has a little bit of a weak low end and you cannot go back to the original material, this might save the day. Same thing if you have a track that sounds really dull and boring, you can turn this to high and add a little bit of top end saturation. Let's try both of them and let's see what they do. It sounds amazing. Of course, I'm overdoing it right now. I wouldn't do this in a mastering situation, but 
I hope you appreciate what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to show you what colors you can get out of this machine. Now, before we jump into the high frequency saturation, what I want to say is that the black box is one of those units where how you drive it and how much you drive it makes a huge, huge, huge difference to the sound, okay? So this is one of the very good examples of why you would need to know your gain staging and all these things. Because I know quite a few people don't know about gain staging, they just completely forget about it. And when it comes a time that they can invest on something like the black box or any other piece of analog gear, they have no idea how to use it properly because they don't do their gain staging right. So as you can see, I'm driving this with very moderate levels. If I drive it hard, this is going to saturate straight away. I'm going to get a completely different sound. So how much I drive it is extremely important for a unit like this that has all these tube stages inside, right? So let's move on to the high end and let's see how we can add some sheen to this track. Now, this specific track maybe doesn't need it, but nevertheless, I'm going to show you. See, not only it adds this nice top end, it makes the track seize a little bit. Of course, I, again, I overdid it. I would just add just a tiny bit of this, but it also makes the song move a little bit better. All these hi-hats acquire a nice, you know, movement. So while we're at the top end, I'm going to show you the airlift button right there, okay? Let's try this. This will give us a very nice top end, like this air EQ type top end. Let's try it. And now with some more extreme settings, I want to show you what kind of compression we can get out of the black box if we drive it a little bit. Let's try this. Okay. Now, guys, please, take a look at the meters. Take a look at those meters right here, okay? And let me know which one sounds louder to you, okay? These are a little bit of extreme settings, but listen to the sound, check the meters, let me know which one gives you the most perceived loudness. Let's do this. I mean, yes, this is a little bit of a more saturated sound, but you can see what I'm talking about. This box can give you so many tonal options, and that's why I love it, and that's why I bought it. By the way, I forgot to mention, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this thing, and I wanted to get it out of the way because I'm very excited about this, and you might think that this is sponsored, but honestly, it's not. Check out the perceived loudness, apart from the peaks, okay? This thing just makes me happy. I have to tell you, this machine 
really makes me happy. It's alive, it's breathing, and it can do amazing things to your music. Let's run the drum suite now, the drum bus. For me, the depth and the punch is just unreal. I have a sub bass here that's doubling the Moog bass line and also the real bass that I've played. And here's the part where I want to show you how you can actually add saturation to your sounds. This is a sub bass. This is just a simple sine wave coming from Retrolog. Okay. And as you can see on the analyzer, it's a very simple sound, not too many harmonics. Let's try and add some harmonics with the black box, okay? See how many harmonics I can add with this one. And I haven't even used the parallel saturation yet. Okay, so this one, for example, I would run it as a parallel channel. So I can add a little bit of harmonics to this sub bass so that it cuts through the mix. If I had a bass sound that was very dull and it wouldn't cut through the mix, or if I couldn't hear the notes, this would be my solution. I would probably use this as a parallel channel, okay? So let's listen to this. And I think it sounds really beautiful even when you saturate it a lot. And now let's see what kind of processing we can get when we run some vocals through it, okay? Saturation works very well with vocals. It's one of those things that saturation can make vocals just come up and cut through the mix. And with something like the black box, you do this in the most elegant, beautiful way. Now, especially with pop music, a little bit of tube saturation on your vocals can add a lot of character and warmth and also a little bit of oomph. Let's, let's listen to this. Why don't we add a little bit of saturation to the top end? I mean, it, it adds this fairy dust, in my opinion. Again, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Of course, you can tone it down if you want to. But for me, for vocals, the air circuit is amazing. The parallel saturation on the high end is beautiful. And of course, I'm driving them a little bit. And I'm going to solo them so that you can hear when the tube breaks as well. Let's listen to this. And quite honestly, I wouldn't level match here. Why? Because when I'm mixing, basically I'm using this as my fader, okay? And I'm listening to when it will sound good. If I level match, I'm basically going backwards, okay? For something like the vocals and all these things, I would just use this as my fader, okay? And then if I want to add some compression, that's fine. Let's all of them and let's try and see what kind of saturation, what kind of grid we can get out of this. 
It's creamy. Uh, it's, I mean, you can hear the chips breaking. I love this kind of sound. Again, I would use this as parallel because this is so compressed now. You can use it as a parallel compression signal, but with added harmonics, with added juice. Let's add this to this funky guitar and let's see how we can do with this. You and I know As the last thing I'm going to add it on this bass that I recorded, let's try it. So do you want to get some extra harmonics, a little bit of grit from your bass? There we go. All right, now let's move on to the part of the video that I know quite a few of you will be very interested in. And quite frankly, I wish a video like this existed before I bought the black box, but I was lucky enough to demo it first and actually realize that I need this piece of gear in my life. So now let me go ahead and run the same material through the black box, the hardware, and through the black box, the plugin alliance plugin. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing straight away the plugin and the hardware don't necessarily match, okay? So don't expect the settings to be exactly the same. I'm going to try and replicate the settings on both the hardware and the plugin, but after I do all the tests, I'm going to tell you my honest opinion about the plugin versus the hardware. Okay, let's try it on the master bus first. In my opinion, this is pretty close. There is a little bit of a difference, but it sounds like I got two of these, you know? Now, let's try this on the drums. And I'm going to try the plugin first. Let's do it. Okay, and now let's try a little bit more extreme saturation for our drums. I mean, the plugin does exactly the same thing. It compresses the signal in a very, very natural way, but the perceived loudness is way higher, okay? Okay, let's solo the drums for a second. Let's listen to what it does so we can focus on the drums. I mean, I'm keeping my eyes here, okay? I'm trying to level match as close as possible. Okay.
Now moving on, let's check this on the vocals and let's try to get these vocals a little bit gritty, okay? I've been working till the morning light I don't know what's in my sight You and I no compromise I can see through all your lies Come dance with me, uh, come dance with me Come dance with me into infinity I've been working till the morning light I don't know what's in my sight You and I no compromise I can see through all your lies Come dance with me uh. Come dance with me Come dance with me into infinity So I don't know what you guys think Let me know in the comments down below I'm going to give you my personal opinion my complete honest opinion. I think they sound very, very close. There are differences, but it's this kind of differences that you find anyway between pieces of analog gear. So I'm pretty sure that if I got another black box, if I was lucky enough to have a second one, I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't sound exactly the same. Don't quote me on that because I'm pretty sure that the quality control is really impeccable for these units, but you know, it's tubes, and the longer you have the tubes, the sound is probably going to change a little bit, and the transformers and everything. So what I'm trying to say is this, I own the hardware. Do I use the plugin? Hell yeah, I do use the plugin all the time. Actually, sometimes I might use the plugin even more than the hardware because it's very convenient, you know, I can add it to as many channels as I want and I can get to, I want to say 95% of the sound of the hardware. I'm just saying 95 because I'm going to show you something that's the only thing, if you're very picky, that's a difference. But the plugin is a miracle, in my opinion, and I've, I've listed it on my favorite plugins. I was in love with the plugin for a long time before I decided to invest in this, and this speaks volume of how good the plugin is. Now, does it make sense for you to spend 10 times the price of the plugin, and sometimes even more because the plugin goes on sale very often? It's up to you to decide. For me, this sound was so important that I decided to invest on the hardware. I think the tube sound and this tube saturation is one of the hardest things to get on a plugin. And there are very few plugins on the market that can achieve this warm, round, and very smooth saturation that the tubes can provide. Now, I'm going to show you this one thing that might differentiate the hardware unit to the plugin. Let me show you. So let's take this Retrolog as an example. A very simple sine wave. Now let's try and saturate this with the plugin, okay? I'm going to go with very, very extreme settings. Lots of saturation, saturation all the way up, pen dot all the way up, try it all the way up, and let's try the difference. Plugin. And at this stage, you can also see this drift from the left and right channels. We can fix this very easily with a trim. Okay, so this is one of the occasions when you drive the, you know, all this saturation so hard, the tube so hard, you get this kind of drift with your left and right channels, but the trim is there to help you with that. So as you can hear, the hardware, there's a little bit of noise there, okay? To me, in these extreme settings, for example, for the vocals, the extreme distortion settings, to me, that's the only time where the hardware sounds a little bit more open, a little bit more like it's breathing to me, a little bit more natural, but the difference is really, really small. As far as I'm concerned, the plugin is more than enough when you want to do these things. Now, the other difference is, if you try and uh, add, you know, really, really extreme saturation settings, let's try this sine wave from Retrolog again. Now let's try the black box, the plugin. Okay, and now let's listen to the same thing with the hardware. Okay, plugin. Hardware. 
as you can see, and I mean, there are quite a few videos online that uh, explain what this phenomenon is. It's called aliasing, and basically some frequencies, when we distort so much, they just fold back and they appear right here. We should only get higher harmonics, right? Not below. But with the plugin, you get this. Check it out. And these are, as you can hear, quite dissonant. Where with the hardware, you don't get this. It's clean, it's pristine, and you get pleasing harmonics. Only. You don't get this thing here. I mean, of course you can get rid of it. But see what happens. Hardware? No problem. Now, the only reason I wanted to demonstrate this for you is so that you can hear what is this thing that everybody is talking about, the aliasing thing. So, should you worry about it? In my opinion, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Because the times that you will need so extreme distortion settings on the black box are very, very rare. And especially with material like this, in order to replicate this, I had to run a sine wave at a very high octave and saturate the hell out of it. And then I would get this at a very high level. So for 99% of the things that you would do with the black box, you shouldn't really care about this. And don't underestimate the fact that the plugin is so much more convenient, you can run as many instances and it can infuse live punch harmonics to your mix by adding it on individual channels. Most of the times what I do actually is I have the plugin on individual channels and then I have the hardware on my master bus. So in my opinion, the plugin should be in your toolbox. It's my secret weapon for quite a few things. Now, one thing that I really don't want to forget, I really want to mention is that the people behind the company, Analog Design, are really incredible people. They're passionate about the product. They're professional. They're in the business. When I was trying this out, I sent them an email. I got in touch and both of them got in touch. They gave me super useful information. For example, one of the things that they told me was that this unit likes transients. So I should run it before the compressor so that I have all the transient information because it loves transients. And it's true. And I wouldn't have done it if I didn't know. I like supporting companies like this. So big ups to Robert and Eric. Thanks so much guys. You've been incredible. So there you go guys I hope you enjoyed this video I had loads of fun making it in the comments down below You know what I'm gonna say let me know which one did you prefer the most? Did you prefer the hardware or the plugin version or did you like the hardware on drums and the plugin for bass? For example, let me know. I'd really like to know. I'm really interested because I think both of them sound really, really good. If you enjoyed this video, give it a warm tube thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit that bell notification icon. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.